Now, before we go any further, there's a few rules about electric field lines that are really important and have to be followed if we're going to be able to really understand how charges act and operate inside of electric fields. So before I get to the actual rules, I want to tell you what electric field lines look like for various particles. There's really just two, right? So for a positive particle, we know that the electric field lines point away. We saw that in the last video, right? Always points away. Okay. And we know, well, I'm about to tell you anyways, that the electric field lines for a negative particle, a negatively charged particle, always point towards that particle. Simple as that. Okay, so electric field lines always end on negative particles and always begin or emanate from positive particles. So then what happens when you have a proton next to an electron? Well, you simply get electric field lines that point from one to the other. This guy will actually end up bending over and turning into this. This guy will come over here and go this way. This one will go like this, right? And the ones that are obviously over here, if there's nothing else over here, they're just going to come in from infinity. This guy's going to go out to infinity, 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 and then there'll be, you know, more in between, okay? And that's it. These are the electric field lines of two charged particles. By the way, two charged particles that are opposite of each other, you may have heard this from chemistry, it's called a dipole. So this is technically a dipole here. All right, what are those four rules of electric field lines? Rule number one, electric field lines are continuous curves that are tangent to electric field vectors. Okay, so what do I mean by that? I mean, electric field lines are always smooth and continuous. You're never gonna just see one stop suddenly, right? Un unless it's ending, obviously, on another particle. But in, in free space, you never see one just stop suddenly, all right? Um, and at every little point along the way here, so the electric field vector here at this point, the direction electric field would be pointing this way, electric field here would be pointing this way. So the, so the E vector, the electric field vector, is always tangent to the electric field lines. Okay? Makes sense. It's not too tough. E would be this way. Here, E would be this way. Right? Electric field at any given point is tangent to the electric field line. Okay. Rule number two. Closely spaced lines, like around here, um, indicate a greater electric field strength. And widely spaced field lines, like here, indicate uh, less of an electric field. Okay, so in other words, wherever the electric field lines are packed together the tightest, that's where you're going to find the strongest field, which makes sense because that would be, you know, near the particle. You'd expect the strongest field to be right near the particle where R is small, right? The distance away from the particle is small. Um, and then farther away from the particle, either way over here or way over here, you expect to have spread out lines, spread out lines, and that'll be a smaller electric field. Okay, rule number three. Electric field lines always start on positive charges and end on negative charges. I already mentioned that one. And rule number four, super important, electric field lines never cross. Why is that? What would it mean if, if an electric field line crossed? Well, remember, so let's say I have an electric field line here and I have another electric field line here. Remember I said that the electric field is tangent to the electric field line. So if electric field lines crossed, that would mean that there'd be one electric field pointing this way and one electric field pointing this way. And that's impossible. That could be confused. The electric field would be all confused, right? It wouldn't know what to do. So just know that net electric field, right? The electric field lines of the net electric field never cross each other. And th that's it. Those are the four rules of electric field lines. With this, we can basically know what any particle is going to do in you know, in a certain situation. So for example, let's say that I put a negative charge right there. All right. Well, according to what we know about electric field lines, we know that this charge is going to follow this field line over and land on the positive charge. Because remember, negative charges move opposite the direction of the field line. 
And if I'm over here and I put a positive charge, right, I know that this positive charge is going to flow along this field line over into that negatively charged particle. Okay, because positive charges move in the direction of electric field lines. All right. Um, the units for electric field are newtons per coulomb. And you're going to see why that works out in a little bit when we talk about the equation. But for now, just know the units of electric field are newtons per coulomb. And on this slide right here, I have some typical values for electric field strengths, right? So inside of a wire, for example, it's pretty small uh, electric field, right? There's not a super strong electric field in a typical wire. It's basically anywhere between 0 0.001 to 0 0.1 newtons per coulomb. Pretty small, right? This can go all the way up to the inside of an atom where you have preposterously huge electric fields. Inside of an, uh, in an atom, it's 10 to the 11 newtons per coulomb. So just compare the two. Um, many, many, I mean, that's that's a, a one with 11 zeros after it. That is a preposterously huge electric field. Why would that be? Why do you think there would be such a huge electric field inside of an atom? Well, for one, it's made of charge. For two, the atom is extremely, extremely small. So inside of an atom, you are incredibly, incredibly close to protons and electrons, right? And you would imagine that that close to a proton or electron, you would have an extremely large electric field. And when we talk about how to actually calculate electric field strength, you'll actually see why that is. Um, and that'll be in the next video. In the meantime, I do have one slide, and it is in the module, that talks about, uh, that's a, a simulation for electric fields. It's called the FET electric field simulation. Um, and you can actually see how electric fields add depending on different charge distributions. I encourage you to play with it. It's a lot of fun. And our lab for electric fields is actually going to be another simulation, which is a game called uh, Electric Field of Dreams, which is fun. It's actually a game. And it's a reference to a 1980s movie, which maybe none of you actually know. So I feel old. OK, in the next video, we're going to talk about how to calculate the strength of this electric field.